Herbert Hoover is going to be elected in 1928. Um, Calvin Coolidge decided not to run for a re-election uh, for a number of different reasons. Some people think that he saw kind of what was happening with the economy and chose not to run again. He, Hoover, calls himself a progressive conservative. And by what that means is he believed in the idea of laissez-faire uh, uh, economy, but he's going to try to promote some of these more progressive ideas. He believed in having few government supports for individuals, but he also believed that corporations should voluntarily cooperate in order to avoid cutthroat practices in order to avoid some of the excesses of a laissez-faire economy. In other words, we call this volunteerism. He believed that corporations would voluntarily give up profits in order for the greater good, and kind of everybody laughed at him about it. Um, during the 1920s economy, we can see there's problems because the farmers were struggling. Following World War I, um, the Europeans were able to grow their own products again. Combine that with the idea of machinery being used to now uh, increase the amount of production available on a farm, we have overproduction of farm crops. What this means is that we have an increase in supply while at the same time having a decrease in demand because the Europeans don't need to buy American products anymore. And what ends up happening is if we have our supply and demand curves here, we have an increase in supply. Whoops, I got that backwards. We have an increase in supply while also having a decrease in demand. And what happens is farm prices drop dramatically during this time period. Also, while the farmers are struggling, there's a lot of shenanigans going on in the stock market. One of the biggest things being buying on margin. Now there's a lot of things that are going on in the stock market, but this one is important. People are investing heavily in the stock market in the 1920s rather than reinvesting in their businesses, hiring more workers, paying a living wage. Remember the unions have been busted uh, earlier in the 20s. So wealthy people are taking all their money and flooding it into the stock market. And the stock market is kind of like baseball cards. Stocks are only valuable as long as somebody wants to buy it. And in the 1920s, there was this assumption that they had solved the economy. And there is this assumption that the value of stocks were always going to go up. So what people would do is they would borrow up to 90% of the value of a stock from a, a stockbroker, and then they would wait for the value of the stock to go up, and then they would sell the stock at a profit, right? They would pay off the 90% and then keep what was ever left over, and this made people lots and lots of money. But with that assumption that the value always goes up, they didn't actually think about what would happen if the value went down. Because what happens if the value goes down, you have that same supply and demand problem. All of a sudden there's an overabundance supply of the stock, which causes this cascading situation where the value of the stock goes down. We would call this rampant speculation in the stock market. People are gambling, assuming that the value is gonna go up, not realizing that they could risk losing everything. And that's what happens in the stock market crash in 1929 when all of a sudden everybody was selling their stock and everybody had to keep selling their stock because they had to pay off their loans. Otherwise, the uh, bankers would lose their money as well, which caused this oversupply, low demand, prices fall to the floor. The crash is going to signal the start of the Great Depression. It is not a cause of the Great Depression. It is a signal that the symptoms have finally caught up uh, to where people can recognize that the economy is in a depression.